34 exercise number 155 ready start from time to time we have discussed the question of the influence of the press and you cannot deny that on all occasions I have been able to make out a fairly strong case for the justification of the statement that journalists on the whole work for the cause of progress and if you should not be willing to allow this, they would be unduly condemned for that for which they were not altogether responsible. You will recollect that some time ago, I cannot say the exact date, you stated that you were not satisfied that the influence of the press was for good. I would not reopen this question so soon again if it were not for the speech of one of our leading orators the other day which impels me to write a few words respecting it. He was the principal guest at the annual dinner of the local press club and I have carefully perused more than one report of the speech in the several newspapers in which it has appeared. He said he was getting on in life and for some time past had withdrawn from public life and hoped that he had done with public speaking. The great terror of every public speaker in his time was the reporter, but to some extent and to what extent is apparent from a study of newspapers, pressmen had ceased to report the speeches to which it was understood the whole community were looking forward with breathless interest. Exercise 156. <coughs> Stack. Dear Mr. Scott, for some time past, I have been unable to write to you as I have desired and as I promised you when you were here. I hope you will not be annoyed at my apparent neglect. You should not be and I am sure you will not be when you are aware of the reason for my silence. I have no doubt you will remember that I was not well previous to your visit but I am sorry to tell you I have been under the care of Dr. Brown ever since the day you left. Indeed, you were not gone and however, when I had to send for the physician, I do not know what was the cause of my illness. I cannot say that I am aware of anything to which it may be due. I know of nothing to which it can be traced. At all events, it has been 
very severe and for some time my recovery was considered hopeless of course i am not yet out of the wood and i must not boast but i think i am fairly on the road to complete recovery you will be sorry to learn that i am not yet strong enough to leave my room but you must not suppose that i am in danger i trust i shall be able to make an effort to visit you sometime during the coming month at any rate i am hoping so i must leave off for the present but will write again very soon very truly yours thomas mekin next exercise 157 ready start at any rate the speaker continued the reporter was no longer the terror of public speakers and now only reported the speeches of the great lions of the front bench he believed that the press did work for the cause of progress but at the same time he warned his bearers of their influence in the cause of peace and implored them to hesitate before they did anything to bring about the horrors of war it is on this question of war he went on to say that you are not at one with me you must not be vexed if i venture to repeat that i cannot see why you should condemn at all times and under all circumstances the influence of the press in this matter as if it were the duty of the journalist in so many words to denounce all wars and cry for peace on every occasion a notable writer says war is sacred and there can surely be no doubt that it is absolutely necessary to use force for the suppression of tyranny and wrong doing i may not be able to see you for a long time to come so i hope you will not fail to write me on this subject doubtless you will be able to find some objections to my statements <coughs> still i am able to think that you will modify your views in the early future if it be not too much trouble to you will you kindly post to me the copies of the pamphlets i lent you some time ago and although you may not have read all of them perhaps you will give me your opinion on those you have perused we should exhibit charity 
in our words at all times and in this spirit i trust we shall always express our thoughts when writing to each other on controversial topics next exercise 158 start dear mr scott since i wrote you last i have heard that you were injured slightly in a railway accident is this true i trust not if it is you are not likely to be improved by my letter if it is not you will pardon my mentioning the report in any case you might send me word and if you can spare the time perhaps you will come over on monday if you cannot arrange this please inform me from time to time how you are getting on with the new business to which it appears you are devoting yourself if it be as successful as you were inclined to think you will be very fortunate and if it be not quite so profitable as you hoped it will still have proved an interesting experiment at all events it was well worth a trial at the same time you should not work too hard if you do you must not be surprised to find your health giving way i have no doubt of the ultimate success of your patent if it were necessary i could arrange to invest a considerable amount in the business i cannot do anything in the matter of the shares you spoke about until i have seen you again i cannot see that there is any hurry about the affair if it does happen that the shares are all taken up before i make application i shall not mind very much i am trusting however that you will be able to pay me a visit on monday and explain matters i have staying with me an old friend who has been out to south america for 3 years on business matters and i am sure you will be delighted with his conversations on the customs and manners of the natives yours truly thomas makin